Hello everyone. Today I want to talk a little bit about body humidity and humidity deficit because this seems to be a concept that causes a lot of confusion. And I think it causes confusion because people deem it a lot of math and anything that is math is hard. So I'm going to try to simplify it for us. Um, I've got a very simplistic drawing here and then the board divided into body humidity on this side and humidity deficit. So let me get you acclimated to what we've got going on here. So this is simple view of the lung. This is our trachea, main stem bronchi, there is the carina, and we branch down to the right and the left lung. And another thing that you'll notice is right here we have this red line. This red line is called the isothermic saturation boundary. ISB is how we abbreviate it. And basically this boundary or this 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 place in the lung is about five centimeters below the carina. And what it represents is as we inspire air, you know how air travels down our airway and it gets warmer, it heats up to body temperature and it gains water vapor. It gets warmed and humidified, right? That's the function of our nose, our upper airway, and actually our trachea and main stem bronchi to some degree. So as a person breathes in, that air travels, it gets warm, it picks up humidity, and by the time it hits this isothermic saturation boundary, it is completely warm to body temperature. So we're just gonna put 37 degrees, okay? 37 degrees Celsius. Now, the amount of water in the air that we've just breathed in, when it hits that point and it is warm to 37 degrees, it contains 44 milligrams per liter. Basically, that's a weight. If we can weigh the amount of water in that air, it's gonna weigh 44 milligrams per liter, okay? This is the number we wanna focus on. Now, just a fun fact, <laughs> that 44 milligrams per liter, it's a weight, but it also creates a pressure, water vapor pressure, which is what you are using in your alveolar air equation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this in the alveoli so we don't get the two mixed up. Okay, real quick we recap. We breathe in, the air we breathe in travels down the airway till it hits the ISB. And at that point, it is completely warm to body temperature, 37 degrees, and it's fully 100% saturated with water vapor, and that water vapor weighs 44 milligrams per liter. Pretty simple, right? Okay, this is how we apply it. If we have a patient on a bubble humidifier, and we're running uh, the, a nasal cannula on that bubble humidifier, two liters per minute. And let's say we measure that water vapor we're giving to the patient, and we measure that at 10 milligrams per liter. This is actually called absolute humidity because that's absolutely what we're giving them, okay? <laughs> so we're giving the patient 10 milligrams per liter of water vapor. Now, let's come over to this side of the chart and let's talk about body humidity. The patient needs 44. Of that 44, we're delivering 10. So we are giving 10. The patient needs 44. And when we do that simple math, we are providing 23% of what the patient needs. So body humidity is what we give to the patient, the percentage of that water vapor that we are providing as respiratory therapist. That's pretty simple, right? Well, then when you come over here, humidity deficit has to be what we are not giving. Okay, so if we're giving 10 and the patient needs 44, that means we are not giving 34 milligrams per liter, okay? We can transition this number, 34 milligrams per liter, the weight, into a percentage. 34, what we're not giving, divided by the total that the patient needs, is 77%. All right, so body humidity is what we are providing to the patient. Humidity deficit 
is what we are not giving. And here's the deal. The bigger the deficit, the more the body is going to have to humidify its own gas. And what it does is it pulls water from the secretions and the secretions get thick and sticky. So this is why when you're passing, uh, when you're giving a lot of flow, like uh, from a mechanical ventilator, for example, you have to humidify that gas so we don't dry the airway and we don't produce, we don't dry out the secretions and they don't get really thick and sticky. So really pretty simple concept. I've hoped it helped. If you need anything, just email me at tpeel at respiratoryhq.com. See you soon.